September 3rd, 2021, Drake released his sixth album, Certified Lover Boy. March 5th, 2021, Drake released his fourth EP, Scary Hours 2. In the same year, why are these two projects relevant in this conversation? I realized in the year 2021, Drake gave me far more entertainment and far more hope for his ability as an artist with this Scary Hours 2 EP. After listening to it, I just realized how much it encompasses everything that makes Drake great. How it highlights Drake's strongest abilities, his strongest attributes, without overstaying its welcome. And I only thought about Scary Hours 2 uh, as an EP after Certified Lover Boy came out. The way I feel about Certified Lover Boy is comparable to the way I feel in regards to people who romanticize relationships they've never been in. Which is funny considering how often Drake talks about the relationships he's had with women and how he'd like for those relationships to be, as opposed to how they genuinely were. The idea of Drake making an album titled Certified Lover Boy seems great on paper. If I haven't explained it in the past, I'll explain it again. Drake, when he's not taking himself seriously, probably makes the best music and the most enjoyable music I think I've ever really heard from Dude. In a record that I felt most people probably took a little too seriously Dark Lane demo tapes, Drake felt comfortable, felt like he had nothing to prove, making the music that he wanted to make without concern or, or focus of what his audience or what people wanted to hear from him. And while the material off of Dark Lane demo tapes certainly is not Drake's best, it was refreshing to see material from the artist most talked about in the world come off as if he were saying, I'm living life unconcerned about what the public thinks about me, my life, or my music. It felt free, it felt light, it felt unburdened in a time where the pandemic had prevented people from being around one another protests were running rampant this record gave me a bit of mental exhalation not euphoric enough or dreamy enough to say it was an escape but it did give me a sense of simplicity i say all that to say that drake's best work is very rarely the work that he overthinks. So you can imagine my exhaustion at the thought of Drake carrying on for an additional 86 minutes for this new album, especially in a back and forth with Kanye leading up into its release that I couldn't use any other word to describe as other than I. Records that essentially hold no weight for me anymore given how not only were they pretty vague in who they were referring to and some of the things they were referring to but now they've made up so i don't really feel the sting in this as much i mean the idea of fucking fans and tsu where drake goes into these spiels about purposefully engaging in relationships with girls that don't have their parents around tracks like way too sexy which seem fun in theory listening to further just seem like like Drake possibly inching towards a midlife crisis, talking about being a lesbian, all on an album titled Certified Lover Boy from a guy who in a few years will be saying is pushing 40, uh, isn't great. I mean, after Drake and Kanye made up, no friends in the industry and 7am on Bridal Path just seem more and more like Will Smith going up to slap Chris Rock on stage, but without Jada Pickett Smith in context at all or the award satisfaction of going to slap your at the time enemy i mean drake spent a good chunk of his time going back at kanye and it essentially benefited him in no way i can imagine drake looking back at some of the things that he said on those tracks and or wanting to forget them entirely it's almost as if he's yelling at kanye to leave him alone but screaming it from like a 35 year old perspective the thing that made a track like wants and needs so great was the fact that you couldn't tell if drake was really poking fun at kanye when he said i need some Jesus in my life in reference to Ye, dissing him or giving him props. It was juicy enough to raise an eyebrow, yet vague enough to not distract from what's going on in the track outside of the Ye mention in general. That and the little baby feature on here being amazing helps too. Fantastic hook, great intro verse. I honestly wish we got a music video for this track. And Lil Baby being great on this track doesn't come at the expense of Drake also being great. Most of Certified Lover Boy, Drake is outshined by his features, whether it's the Yeba track, whether it's a track with Tim's, whether it's Future on Way Too Sexy, or Lil Durk and Giveon on In The Bible, or Lil Baby again on Girls Want Girls. Most of Certified Lover Boy when it comes to the features is unfortunately Drake just happily sitting in the passenger seat. And the tracks off of this record that are really good, in my opinion, could have just easily been additions to an already good 
uh, Scary Hours 2 EP. Take Get Along Better. Take Pipe Down. Take Champagne Poetry. And boom, we have a great little EP or a great little mixtape that he can release. Without the need to facilitate a mansion for the content that's worth a townhouse. What is all this space, all this length, all these features? What are they being used for? Because he's not filling in the gaps. He's not filling up the album. What's Next isn't Drake's best song ever, but it captures much of what a large majority of Certified Lover Boy is attempting better and in a shorter time frame. It's anthemic, whether you like Drake or not. And that's something that Certified Lover Boy just does not have. It doesn't have that anthem. It doesn't have that, that hit. And yes, I know Way Too Sexy went viral, but I'm talking about good music. And don't get me wrong, I like some of these tracks off first listen too, but everything don't age the way you expect it to. Though I didn't expect Certified Lover Boy to have such a short shelf life, what definitely hit me in a crazy way was just how much I enjoyed Scary Hours 2 as an EP in comparison. And I wondered why that was the case. Was it because it was shorter? Was it because there was less expectation given that there was no rollout, it's only an EP? And I realized at this point, I'm comfortable saying that I no longer need new albums from Drake. I don't need him to make another album. I don't need another take care. That's not going to happen. I know we've speculated, we've commented on it. We've, we've theorized about the possibility of Drake getting back into that bag, but he'll never strike lightning twice like that. That's a one-time thing. And I don't think anyone asking for that at this point in his career is, is, is being fair or realistic. We should move on from this Drake. We should move on from the Drake that's still trying to capture that lightning in the bottle, that's still trying to convince people that he is what he says he is. One, quite frankly, because I don't care. And it makes me cringe when he tries to make his audience care about it, when in reality they just want a vibe. Do I think Drake is talented? Of course. Do I think when he's in his bag, his pen can be impeccable? Of course. Do I think he's still capable of making hit music and really enjoyable music? Of course. But I don't believe in him making albums anymore. I don't believe in his ability to put together a body of work anymore. And please, let's not take that the wrong way. I'm not saying Drake needs to stop making albums all of a sudden because this one album wasn't up to snuff. I felt this way about Drake's music since 2016. You can't keep delivering under average after under average after under average. Be as popular as you are and still expect people to have hope in your ability to put together great bodies of work that are beyond the length of the average EP. Drake in small doses is the best Drake to me. It's, it's like a medication that your doctor gives to you and tells you not to take too much of it or you'll start experiencing side effects. With Drake, unfortunately, he makes you take the max dose. You're not able Able to micro dose the medication that he gives you but when you cut up the pill just a little bit it's like huh i'm getting some of the benefits of this and i also don't have to worry about my fucking eyeballs falling out from this point on i think we can move past drake's albums of course i'm not discounting uh if you're reading this is too late I'm, I'm not discounting nothing was the same but too many times when drake tries to make these albums he comes off as less of an artist creating something that is genuinely close to his heart and more like a director who's pandering to an audience who wants to see where the actors of Degrassi are now. Drake is making music like a house husband of Toronto without the wife. When you hear music like Certified Lover Boy, you would love for him to be seen and not heard. And that's just where I'm at. Go listen to Scary Hours 2 EP and delete Certified Lover Boy from your phone.